Welcome back to the next part of the Cognitive Behavioral Therapy. Um, today we're going to continue on with Chapter 4.1, How Childhood and Upbringing Contributes to Ants, which was the Automatic Negative Thoughts. Negative thoughts can be caused by many things. Fear, worry, anxiety and doubt are just some of the reasons people may have automatic negative thoughts. But certain factors fuel the development of auto automatic negative thoughts. These factors are what complicate negative thinking patterns in people. What you may not know is that these things usually start from sometime in childhood. As a child, if you were raised to believe in yourself and be optimistic, it would take a major experience for you to think otherwise and start doubting yourself. In psychology, there's no news about there's no news that many of the disorders and problems we suffer as adults have root in our childhood. Well, negative thinking is no exception. There are cases in which the cause of negative thinking is the upbringing a person had. Like I've already said, CBT doesn't try to address the issues from the past like traditional therapies that employ Freudian theories. It addresses what is happening in the present, that is, the things you are thinking right now. But it doesn't hurt if you already know where the fuel for your thinking pattern is coming from. The kind of upbringing you had has a big effect on how you perceive yourself and the world at large. If you were raised to be a pessimistic child with self-defeating beliefs, that is exactly the kind of adult you are going to be. Let's assume that as a child you grew up with parents who always told you that you could never amount to anything in life because your siblings were smarter than you. Of course you will be hurt because of this. You may not know it, but at some point you may start to accept your parents' claims as the truth and start to view yourself as a failure for real. Rather than work harder to prove your parents wrong, the fact that you have accepted their word as the truth makes you lose motivation. Therefore, you won't want to put your, uh, your all in, sorry, therefore you won't want to put your all into whatever you do. So when you fail at something, you refer back to what your parents said all the time and conclude that you are indeed a failure and that what they said was the truth. Once this belief becomes ingrained in your mind, it alters your perception of yourself. Before you do anything, you unconsciously conclude that I will fail at it like I always do. So it becomes a reoccurrence. The cycle continues. You become sad because you are sure there is nothing you can do about your life. You also become worried and anxious because your about your future because you can't see yourself actually succeeding at anything. In other words, what your parents used to say to you as a child becomes your, rea your reality and your truth. But let me ask you something. Do you think you really are a failure in this situation? Or is it just that your parents' words had a great effect on you? Children are just children. As a child, you are unable to discern right from wrong. That is why children are different from adults. So when your parents said you'd never amount to anything, you accepted it. Not because it's the truth, but because you couldn't reason otherwise and you believed them. The mind is a tricky thing. Once your mind believed what your parents had to say, you started to act in line with that belief. And this proved even further that your parents were right, or so you thought. You were never a failure, you simply started to act like one because you believed you were. As a parent, the things you say to your children can go a long way in shaping how they view themselves, other people, and the world as a whole. In any other case, your negative thinking may not be a product of the things that were said to you as a child. Instead, it could be a result of what you learned from your parents and other adults around you at the time. Parents and adults as a whole are, the, are a big influence on children. So if you grew up with parents who had self-limiting thoughts and beliefs and also acted in self-defeating ways, chances are you turned out with a self-defeating mindset too. Growing up in an environment where the ambience is pessimistic and no one believes in themselves can make you have similar beliefs. The kind of people you are around has a major influence on the way you think and behave. 
For instance, say as a child you grew up with a single father. Your father was a really hard working man and you knew this. However, for whatever reason, you both found it hard to get by. Times were hard. Your father had a tough luck and he lost one job after another. Several times you heard your father saying, I will never be successful. I hope my son doesn't end up with my tough luck. Thus, you, be you became anxious that you might actually become like your father. The fear and worry were so gripping that you actually started imagining living like your father, losing out on everything. Soon, you started to believe that because your father was like this, you would become like this too. It got to a point that you were unable to believe anything else. Looking at this example, you didn't really learn the self-defeating belief from your father directly, but rather from his circumstances and the environment that you were raised in. Abuse is another factor that can result in negative thinking patterns. Abuse is a form of trauma and trauma always has the most adverse effects on even the strongest people, not to mention children. Childhood abuse isn't something that is alien to a lot of people. Your self-defeating beliefs and behaviors as an adult can be the result of the abuse you suffered as a child. Abuse can be physical, emotional, sexual, verbal, or psychological. It doesn't matter what kind of abuse you suffered as a child, abuse, usu abuse usually have the same effects on the victims. Whether you were physically, emotionally, verbally, or sexually abused, it always leaves a large dent on your self-esteem. Fragile self-esteem can also be the reason you have self-defeating thoughts. Another thing that could affect your childhood and ultimately distort your thinking and behavior as an adult is grief. Fragile self-esteem can also be the reason you have self-defeating thoughts. Oh, sorry, is grief. <laughs> the loss of a loved one can be devastating and can make you question your purpose or future in life. If you go on and on about how childhood and upbringing contributes to the automatic automaticity of negative thoughts, I'm sure you get my point. Sometimes you have to learn to let go of the beliefs that were instilled in you as a child and replace them with new beliefs that really conform with your values and experiences. This may be the first step to defeating automatic negative thoughts and changing your perception of you, others and reality. So we're at seven minutes, we might continue with 4.2, breaking automatic negative thinking patterns. Breaking negative thought patterns is easy if you put your mind to it. It is important that you start working on getting rid of negative thinking patterns yourself, even before you go for professional therapy. The key to breaking negative thinking patterns is to be resilient. When you first start, it may be difficult, but get more, it may be difficult, but the more persistent you are, the better you are at getting, the better you get at chasing negative thoughts away when they come barging in. Personally, I al always propose four important steps. These are steps that I have also used to stop the automaticity of negative thoughts before I proceed. I'd like you to know that negative thoughts are absolutely normal for everyone to have in case I haven't said this before. Everyone has negative thoughts. But the key is to never let them overrun your life or start controlling your perception of reality. So how do you break negative thinking patterns? Recognize negative thinking patterns. I have already talked about the different forms negative thoughts can, have, can take. They are usually repetitive, unhealthy and unproductive. Negative thoughts cause negative emotions. This is the first tip for you to be able to recognize them. If a particular thought is making you feel uncomfortable, emotions such as stress, anxiety, unhappiness, shame, fear, or depression, this thought is likely a negative thought. Once you recognize a thought to be negative, the one thing you have to do is move away from the thought. As soon as a negative thought occurs, take a step back from that thought before it becomes repetitive in your mind. How do you do this? When you step back from a negative thought, it is referred to as cognitive diffusion. Cognitive diffusion has to do with the ability to see negative thoughts for what they really are, thoughts. Until you act on it, a thought is just a thought, not your reality. 
The process of being in sync with your thoughts is known as cognitive fusion. When you are fused with your thoughts, you view them as reality. You believe them and act them out because you see no reason why you shouldn't. But when you become defused from your thoughts, you start to take your thoughts lightly and see them for what they are. You are able to have you are able to logically think about them. You react to them only when you have, have evaluated them like you should. Cognitive defusion gives you the ability to make decisions and act in certain ways only after you have considered and looked at the different angles instead of using a single lens. The best way to step away from negative thoughts is to acknowledge them as mental events. Understand that your thoughts have no effect unless you act on them. So avoid acting on them for whatever reason. Here is an example. Let's assume that one day you wake up and prepare for work as usual. As you step out, you realize that your car is faulty. Then a thought comes to your mind like, this day has already started horribly, I'm sure it's going to be dreadful. Now, is the day really going to be dreadful? No, because cars sometimes break down and you have no control over that. However, if you buy into the thoughts and believe that your day is, going, is really going to be dreadful, it means you are cognitively fused and you will likely have a dreadful day. If you believe in a negative thought, it will likely result in negative occurrences. On the other hand, if that kind of thought comes into your head and you immediately dismiss it without accepting it to be truth, it means you are defused from the thought. In other words, you are able to acknowledge your thought as a simple mental event. This way, it doesn't become repetitive. You can set about your day without worry. The ability to step away from negative thinking is incredibly helpful. It can influence the kind of day you have and your life as a whole once you master this technique. Return to your senses. Negative thoughts usually come in two directions. Firstly, they may flow in from past experiences. You may be dwelling on past regrets, mistakes and experiences. Perhaps you constantly ruminate about things that don't go away. Sorry, things that don't go the way you wanted in life. The second direction negative thoughts flow from, flow in from, is fear and uncertainty about the future. You constantly worry about what may happen to you and what may not. This usually results in stress and anxiety. I have seen people who constantly think about their future and relationships. Will it work out? Will I ever become financially secure? These are some of the many questions which can cause stress and anxiety about the future. One interesting thing to note about negative thoughts is that they are always either about the past, the future or the present. You either regret the past, worry about the future or label the present as being bad. Negative thoughts can have such a strong hold on you that they make you snap out of reality. You tend to lose sense of what is real and what is not. You also lose focus of your present reality. In short, you lose touch with yourself and the world at large. To stop being engrossed in negative thoughts, you need to learn to return to your senses whenever you become engrossed. How do you, overcome, how do you return to your senses? Simply redirect your attention to something else. Whenever a negative thought pops up in your head, return, return focus to your sense of perception. The best way to do this is to become aware of everything around you. Engage all of your senses to the fullest. Live in the moment and be mindful. Some people try to stop automatic negative thoughts forcefully, but this rarely works. The more effective way to deal with them is to immerse yourself in your sensory experience. Returning to your senses calms your mind and grounds you in the present. Now, this is not to say that you should immerse yourself in your senses at all times. You should be able to discern when this is appropriate and when it isn't. Just know that it is impossible to ground yourself in the present and still think negatively. Practice mindfulness regularly. Again, this goes back to being aware and mindful of the present. Inside all of us is an ability to be fully aware of our thoughts, emotions, and whatever is happening around us. However, the older we get, the more detached we become from that ability. We basically become drawn into our problems, goals, worries, fears, and ambitions. When this happens, become, becoming fused with negative thinking is always so easy. 
The more you lose touch with your true self, the more drawn in you are by negative thoughts. A Harvard University study has in fact shown that men, most people are lost in thought 47% of the time. And this is what results in cognitive fusion. Mindfulness is a meditation practice that helps you achieve self-awareness. So you can live in the moment. It helps you attain a state of peace and wholeness that prevents you from losing yourself in negative thoughts. In cognitive behavioral therapy sessions, you will, also, you will be taught mindfulness meditation, so you can practice it to stay self-aware. Mindfulness has been shown to decrease stress, anxiety and other powerful emotions that are triggered by negative thinking. When you practice mindfulness regularly, you cultivate a habit of self-awareness and spend less time being stuck in your mind as the thoughts it keeps regenerating. And the thoughts, it keeps regenerating. Counter the thoughts with valid questions. There are certain questions that you can use to engage negative thoughts in order to change your focus. Sometimes negative thinking becomes sticky. No matter how much you try to bring yourself back to your senses, you find that you are unable to do so. If you discover that you are in a position, so you are in this position, asking certain questions which were generated from the acceptance and commitment therapy will, also, will help to untangle you from these thoughts. Some of these questions to ask include, what value does this thought add? Is it helpful in any way? Is this thought true? And what makes it true? How true is it? Again, will this thought help me in any way or is it just my mind babbling? The goal is to mentally ask and answer these questions so you can counter the negative thought in your mind. Mentally reviewing and evaluating your thoughts provides you with the opportunity to focus on valuable and constructive thoughts with valid contexts. It also gives you the opportunity to face your challenges head on with a clear mind focused enough to make meaning out of life. In time, you can learn to devise the questions you use by yourself, focusing on the context of the negative thought you have. Constructive thinking encourages happiness and helps put situations into perspective whenever it is necessary. So, so we have chapter 5 next, how parenting styles impact negative behavioral patterns. Um, I'm going to talk very quickly just generally about mindfulness. Um, it's something that I found a little bit helpful from time to time, like when you find yourself getting a bit too focused on one thing or getting a bit anxious or whatever like whatever your thing may be um, one thing that I found that works is just pausing and trying to think of five things that you can see touch taste smell or hear so you know like right here the first thing that I can like the first things it's meant to be five of each or as many of each as you can think of it just helps you sort of centralize yourself to where you are so right now I can hear my computer fan whirring I can feel the heat on the seat that I'm sitting on. I can feel the table that my arm is resting on. I can feel the chair bump into the wall. Smell I always struggle on, I don't have the best sense of smell. Um, but just sitting down and trying to list the like, things that fill those categories, as many things as you can think of, helps bring you out of your head and into the present. In any case, thank you all for watching, and I'll see you next time.